this is uh, interface control and capture packet capture capabilities. So you'll find these when you look in your user workspace manager. And when you have a running simulation, you'll be able to see these new capabilities uh, when you look at the interfaces that are listed for a simulation. And I'll show you that in a moment. So interface state control. Um, there's two main states. There's a, a soft down state and a hard down state. The soft down state uh, basically disconnects a node from the rest of the nodes that are in the same simulation. So I've tried to illustrate that by the broken line that's inside of the, uh, the switch there. The, the node itself will not notice a five state change. So it doesn't see that the Ethernet connection has gone down. But the routing protocols will react after their hold timers expire. <clears throat> and this applies to iOS XRV and ASAV. So in this case, with the, with the soft down, the node is isolated, but the five stays up. In the hard down state, the interface does actually go down. And the routing protocols, of course, react to that immediately, as do other protocols that track interface state. And this is the mode that applies to IOSV, CSR1000V, and NXOSV. And I'll be showing these in a moment. So the next feature is packet capture. And it, too, has two modes, one of which uh, on the bottom here is a mechanism where the packets that are captured for a specific interface are written to a file. On, uh, that file is accessible on the UWM. And it can be downloaded to your PC and then played by any PCAP-capable um, application. The second mode, which I'm showing on the top, is the remote PCAP. In this case, the packet capture is written to a, a live TCP port. And you can then use a mechanism on a remote machine to send that to a file and then watch the packets being captured to that file live again with your PCAP application. So there is some flexibility with that feature. You can limit the capture on, on the amount of time, on the number of packets, on the size of the capture. Um, you can also filter using uh, various filters that apply to the, to the PCAP protocol. And the TCP port can either be auto-created or selected at the time of the capture. And as I mentioned, the, the capture files are persistent until they're deleted or until the session is ended. So I'm going to switch here to um, sharing my desktop. And I have a simulation running already. It's quite simple. Uh, it's uh, three routers and three servers. And two of the routers are IOS V, west and south. And one of the routers, east, is, is XRV. So this is the user workspace manager. And I have the simulation running. And you can see if I click on the simulation, the traffic capture um, section and the interfaces section. And we have um, the ability on all the various interfaces to either update the state or create a capture. But before I do that, I'm going to go to West. And this, this is a running simulation, as I said. So we can do things like show CDP neighbors, show IP OSPF neighbors. And we can see that uh, we've gotten our, our adjacencies uh, established to the other routers in this simulation. So I'm going to go back to the user workspace manager. And on West node, the interface that I'm interested in is 0, 1. That's the connection that goes east to west. So I'm going to update the administrative state to down. And we'll immediately see on west that the router detects this. The state goes down. And of course, with the state down, if I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, I'm going to lose that adjacency. If I go back and change that state up. Now, notice in the interfaces table, the interface up state is false. So we can see which interfaces have been brought down in our simulation. I can go back, update the administrative state to up. And it may take a moment, but we should begin to see the link protocol come back up on the, on the uh, interface. And the uh, OSPF adjacency will be formed right away. 
Okay, so I'm going to do the same on east. Now east is the XRV node, and we can see here, oh, that we've got our adjacencies, and, and the interface that we're interested in here is 0001. So 0001, I'm going to bring the interface state down. But note here that we're not going to see any notice of the state change. And if I do a show IPOSPF neighbor, of course the dead time, I had to hit it right at the beginning of the 40 seconds, that dead time, we're, we're not going to see any change on this router until that dead time expires. So we'll continue to uh, wait for that to count down. And when that gets to zero, we'll see that the adjacency will change um, state to down. It'll eliminate that connection and then we can go back and bring it back up again. But while we're doing that, <clears throat> I want to show you, pardon, I want to show you that I also have some traffic running across those connections between the nodes Seattle and Boston. And if we go back to VM Maestro, Seattle to Boston. And I'm going to show you in a moment how we can capture packets that are traversing that segment. So we can see at this point that that router adjacency, OSPF adjacency, has uh, been eliminated. So I'll go back. I'll find the interface. It's showing down as it's showing the interface state is false. Bring it up again. And we should see right away that the interface is up. So this is a good way for you to test various behaviors of routing protocols and, and other features within your network. You can bring the interfaces up and down. Just remember that with XRV and ASAV that the um, hold timers are going to have to expire before you see any indication. So now what I want to do is to show the packet capture capability. So. The, um, the, the interface that I'm interested in is 0002 on the east router because that's the one that connects to Boston. And I have a couple pings running from Dallas and from Seattle up to Boston. So I'll go to that interface, and I'm going to begin a packet capture. Now we have two modes, offline and live. I'm going to do offline first. And in this case, I'm going to say that I want to capture 10 packets. So I'll create the capture. I can go into the traffic capture section up above, and I can see that that capture is running. Now, I only wanted to get 10 packets, so that's not going to take very long. And when I do a refresh, I'll see that that, has, um, that, that packet capture has stopped. So I can click, and I can say Fetch Captured Data. It'll download to my PC. And then I can open that file in Wireshark, and I can see that I have indeed captured those ICMP packets, and there's 10 of them because that's how many I told it to capture. So let's go back, and I want to do another capture. But in this case, I want to go do a live capture. So I'm going to tell it I want, to, want it to put the packets on the port 40,000. I'm going to go ahead and let it run, so I'm not going to set any limits. So as that starts, I can go back to my PC and I can use um, Netcat to capture that to a file. So I've started that, and in my downloads, oops, in my downloads, I should see that file. I can open it, and again, once again, we can see that I'm capturing the packets. But in this case, I'm capturing beyond 10, and if I do a control R to update, you can see at the bottom that the number of packets that I'm capturing is increasing. So this is the one of the mechanisms that you can use to do a live packet capture uh, on an interface. So I'm going to go ahead and close that again. Go back, and I'm going to stop that capture. And start another. But this time, I want to illustrate that you can also do PCAP filters. So 
in the user workspace manager, you can see that there's a syntax reference, and if you click that, it's going to open up all the various um, syntax that you can use to uh, form filters and capture only specific packets. So I'm going to do something fairly simple here. I'm just going to say I don't want ICMP. Go ahead and start it. Oops, sorry, I did that offline. I want it live. I'm going to put it on port 50,000 and not ICMP. Create. And this time I'm going to capture to a different file name. Looking for 50,000. And we can see in this case I'm not capturing the ICMP anymore. I'm just capturing the OSPF packets, which are sent even though it's a server interface. And just to show you that this is working the way we expect, I'm going to go over to Dallas, and I'm going to create an SSH connection over to the Boston router, which is 10.0.0.13. Now if I go back to my packet capture and do a refresh, we'll see that in this case I'm getting the TCP connection, the SSH connections, and so on. So there's a, a quick demo of those two new capabilities uh, that should make um, testing within Viral uh, much easier and uh, much more informative in the future. Thanks.